Module 8 Performance Basics The problems involving performance aspects of any database system usually are the most complex ones to troubleshoot, and with SQL Server this is not an exception. When a client complains that a database server is slow, the application queries are running slow or slower than normal. Even if it's a few seconds more, it can make a big difference at the end. Consider yourself withdrawing cash from an ATM. After you selected the amount of cash you want and you enter your password, it takes up to 5 seconds max to the money to be dispensed. If it took 5 seconds more, you already start to feel the delay. With the business application, there is no difference. These three statements are common complaints from end users when having SQL Server slowness problem and it's the TBA duty to attempt to narrow down the cause of it. These are some questions that TBA can use to evaluate a performance situation before touching the system itself by running scripts and collecting data. It is very important to have one representative from the business application or the client when troubleshooting performance. The first one, if there are recent changes to the physical infrastructure or the application code or application software. The accepted versus current response time. The client must be able to measure how much the application is slowed down in numbers. Consider a period such as month ends, financial closing and ask if there are changes to the data volume that is being processed. Ask if the situation can be reproduced. Maybe if the client is having problems performance problems with a store procedure that only displays data, if it can be reproduced at any time, it's a very good way to start, so we can monitor the environment in real time while the problem is happening. Check if there's any performance baseline available. By having metrics on performance counters such as memory or CPU utilization, it gets easier to compare data from before and after the problem started. If there is no baseline available, then it's a good moment to start one. And finally, a classic but not to be missed question, how many users are affected? This might look simple, but it's a question that can save you a lot of time since you isolate the performance condition to a specific group of users. And here is where to start. If you are new to SQL Server or have no experience with performance troubleshooting, these steps offer a general health check guideline on where to look when tackling the other situation. This of course, considering that you are not given any more specific information from the client on where the problem might be. First things first, look for any hardware specific errors on Windows Event Viewer logs. Also in the Event Viewer, look for operating system level errors such as memory pressure or high CPU. If nothing was found, proceed with checking the SQL Server itself by inspecting the configurations and reading the SQL Server error log. Going one level deeper, the problem might be specific to logical design, such as beyond table data types, missing indexes or indexes fragmentation. And finally, a more advanced aspect, the query plan itself. Should the problem be with any specific query that is not getting completed or completing with delays, the query plan will inform where is the highest cost of resources. The performance monitor is a built-in tool from Windows Server that allows you to build a performance baseline by collecting data from many aspects such as memory or CPU utilization. You can get periodic data by starting a data collector set or use it on demand simply by selecting the counter list you require and view it in real time using graphical or numeric display. Some counters are specific to SQL Server data can access directly using Transact SQL. They are on this DMV Sys DMOS performance counter. And these are some of the common counters used for baselining performance data. There are hundreds of them, and they are, the use vary according to what you're looking to measure. These are used to measure disk read and write latency. Depending on the values, you can identify which disk has the bottleneck. Physical memory, CPU utilization, access method to measure table scans and index search data, SQL Server Buffer Manager to monitor how much time the data pages are being kept in memory. Memory Manager to get a total usage of the buffer pool and max server memory settings. Statistics to verify the volume of workload of the active queries. The Task Manager and SQL Server Activity Monitor are reactive tools because they do not present cumulative data. They can be used to get a quick view of the current state of a SQL Server in regards of a CPU or memory usage, and 
be used as a temporary evidence. The SQL Server Profiler has a more specific use. It is recommended when you want to capture specific data from a SQL Server in real time to monitor a temporary condition, such as a store procedure performance, audit logins, or even track down specific application errors. The drawback of using Profiler is that you, you need to be certain on which data you want to capture and apply the right filters, otherwise you will have a massive amount of data and as it grows the harder it will be to narrow down the search. A Profiler report can grow quickly and take massive chunks of disk space if not used with caution. It has been marked as a deprecated feature and will be removed in future versions of SQL Server. The, extent event, the extended events introduced in SQL Server 2012 has the same functions and are considered a light version than Profiler. When someone asks what is the best way to get performance data from SQL Server, there is not a single or right answer. It really depends on your preference, the tools you have available and the objective of the data capture. Here are some alternatives to enhance this process by combining it with performance monitor data. The SP Who is active is an enhanced version of the original SP Who and can be downloaded for free provides a lot of details and formatting that are very useful for performance troubleshooting. You can set up your own SQL Server agent jobs to capture data and save them on a table or tables from a database of your preference. You can use the DMVs to monitor real data in case you just need to take a quick look at the current performance counters without needing to save information. The weight statistics is a very powerful resource of performance data but is more complex and requires understanding of some internal structures such as latches and threads execution model. And there are others if you look on the major sites, each one with a different purpose. So all you need to do is a little research to find the one that suits your needs. We have arrived in the end of the training and here is a review on what was covered on each module. In the introduction I have briefed you with the course scope and what you expect from each chapter or module. On the architecture, we studied the internal aspects of a query lifecycle, viewed some key internal components, asset properties, and more. In security, we learned the importance of the service account, the aspects around the sysadmin privilege and risks associated to it. Also, created and changed permissions from a user and changed audit level settings. In the health check part, we studied the availability checks, the difference between using the graphical interface and transact SQL, the BCC commands and dynamic management views. Also, we viewed through a demo a blocked process and a deadlock happening inside a SQL Server. The system databases and databases data and log files were covered in Module 4. Also, we studied the autogrowth settings, transaction log internal structure, and shrink file commands. And on this demo, we saw the errors happening live, just as the file group full and the error 9002. On Module 5, we covered backup and restore concepts from the full backup to the tail of the log one. It was reviewed also which one was applicable for each scenario as well as the restore. On SQL Agent module, it was shown the creation and configuration of a job manually, browsing a job history and the difference of using the maintenance plan. In the high availability, there were the definition of recovery point objective versus recovery time objective and a presentation of each solution available. Also in the demo we were able to view the log shipping and always on configuration and some common problems related to them. Finally, in the last module performance, some general guidelines on performance troubleshooting, the tools and methodology available to build a baseline of performance data. Now that we have reached the end of the training, I would like to emphasize this was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to say, study and learn about SQL Server, but I hope I could give you a brief idea about the major aspects surrounding the database administrator job. I have had a great time and fun with creating and producing this training, and I hope you enjoy the final result as well. Should you have any question, feedback or critic, feel free to contact me at any time using the external email address in the next screen or contact me directly if you work at IBM. Again, thank you for watching.